we're going to look at an expansion for Flashpoint Fire Rescue called Urban Structures. Urban Structures takes you into the city to fight fires. If you want a complete rundown of the rules and gameplay for a lot of the things we're going to talk about, go to our YouTube channel or moderntablegamer.com and you'll be able to see a complete rundown of the experience rules for the base game of Flashpoint Fire Rescue. With the Urban Structures expansion, we get two sides to this board. One side, we have the Brownstone, which is a multi-dwelling apartment building in an urban environment where you have a fire that breaks out in one of the apartments and you have limited access. The other side of this board is called the High Rise. And in the high rise, we have a lot of new things to deal with, like a bucket lift on the fire engine. We're gonna have to learn the rules for that. We have a fire ready emergency elevator, actually two of them that we have to learn how to operate and get in and out of the building. And then we get to learn the composition of a divider wall in an office building. Very exciting stuff. The structural engineer adds some new abilities that we don't have in the base game that are really cool. So I'm going to show you that in detail in a second, but stick around to the end of the video because we're going to test your knowledge with our epic quiz. engineer is a new specialist that comes in the urban structures expansion to uh, Flashpoint Fire Rescue. But the structural engineer is finally a specialist who can return those pesky hotspots and finally someone who can prolong the game and get rid of some of the damage cubes out there. The way the structural engineer gets rid of hotspots and damage cubes is he'd go into the space with the hotspot, now remember, when he gets rid of a hotspot or damage cube, there can't be any fire in any of the spaces adjacent to the firefighter. He spends one action point, and he gets rid of the hotspot, and it goes back to the yellow circle. And that hotspot can get reused later in the game. Likewise, the firefighter can get rid of a damage cube by spending two action points. Spends two, gets rid of the damage cube, and then that get, goes back to the damage cube pile. Again, no fire can be in any adjacent spaces to where he's working. There can be fire on the other side of the wall, as long as there's not a hole in the wall. And again, the structural engineer can't repair holes, he can only repair damage. So the easiest side of our board is the brownstone. The brownstone plays a lot like the boards that came in the base game of Flashpoint Fire Rescue. So you're going to be really familiar with the rules on this board. Uh, the setup is the same way. There's just a couple stipulations. The sides of this board are actually adjacent apartments. We have two main apartments in this, in this board, and that's where the firefighter action takes place. The adjacent ap apartments have no fire, and the firefighters cannot go into those spaces. So it's got a lot of limited access on this board. We can only enter through the short sides of the board where the street is or the sidewalk out here. We have two fire engine spots and two ambulance spots on each side of the board. It costs two action points to move the fire engine from one spot to another on one side of the board. However, in order to get all the way around this building, you have to spend four action points to get to this parking spot over here. We have no parking spots on the side, so you just spend four action points and you can move from one side of the board to the other. That is similar with a base game, except there were parking spots you could stop at on the so each side of the board. The ambulance, um, the same rules apply for the ambulance. The partition walls for these adjacent apartments, these spaces that the firefighters can't enter, they can get damaged, they can get holes in them, 
but the firefighters can't go through the holes into those apartments. That is a limitation on this board. So now we go on to the tough side of the board, and that's the high rise. This side of the board adds a lot of challenges to the game. I found it very challenging myself. It's a lot of fun, but have yet to beat it on the recruit level with my son. We have three explosions, and the first explosion is gonna take place in our black two column. So all we have to do is take our red six-sided die and roll that, and we come up with a red uh, five, and we place our first explosion into five. And that's up, down, left, and right, if you remember, and then we damage two of our blue partition walls. So we have one on the black two column. The next one is kind of go on the opposite side of the board in the black seven column. So again, we just roll our red die. And our explosion goes up, which gets a damage cube. Down, left blows the door off the hinges and to the right. And also remember your hot spot. The next one is going to go in our five row, the red five. So then we pick up our black D8, roll that, and we get a black three. Already a fire, so then we re-roll. If you're playing the heroic version, you'd add your fourth explosion in the red one row here. You just roll the D8, place your fourth explosion in another hot spot. Um, a couple other side notes here. We don't have an ambulance on the high-rise setup. We would only have a fire engine. If we are going to roll an explosion or a you know, potential victim, one of the persons of interest, these blue, blue tokens, or if we would place like hazmat or a hot spot, in one of these elevator spaces, we would re-roll. Firefighters start the game, they have the option of starting in the elevator. The doors are closed on the floor with the fire, and so that means the firefighters would start in the lobby. So the first thing is we're going to talk about is this bucket lift that's on the fire engine. This is more of, let's say, uh, I'd, I'd refer to it like more of a cherry picker where it would lift the firefighter up and it allows the firefighter to have some reach where it would lift them up and they could hover in front of any space that's adjacent to this side of the board where the fire engine is currently located. The same would hold true if the fire engine was on the longer side of the board. The firefighter would have access to any space along that side. Now, at the beginning of the game, there's no holes in the side of the wall there, no doors, no way to get in unless you chop holes in the walls, either from a firefighter inside or if an explosion damages a wall um, you know, with two damage markers and creates a hole, or the firefighter goes up there and actually chops a hole. So it costs two action points to take the time and have the firefighter be lifted up in front of any adjacent uh, spot next to the side of the board the firefighter or fire engine's currently located. So they would spend two action points, be able to be lifted up next to that side of the board, and then they could then chop that side of the board. So, you know, if they had two action points, they could chop one, wait for the next turn, spend two more action points, and chop and damage the wall to create a hole. Once they create the hole, you could then, for one action point, enter the space with a potential victim, and they flip over, and it's a little cat in this case. Then, on his next turn, 
he could spend two action points to get back on the bucket lift, and then it costs four action points to take a potential victim down to back to the fire engine. Once the potential victim is in the fire engine, they're rescued. Let's talk about the emergency elevators. This architect who designed this building was thinking ahead. He had elevators specifically designed for emergencies installed. They operate even when there's a fire. Now, in real life, elevators may or may not do that. And in real life, there'd probably be stairwells in this building in every corner. However, there aren't in this one. So the elevators, like I said, the firefighters can start, their, start the game in the elevator in the lobby. It costs two action points basically just to flip open the door, which signifies that the elevator has lifted up and now it's at the level where the fire is taking place. Then the firefighter can just take his turn as normal and extinguish fire, chop holes in walls, etc, etc. The elevator is another possible way to rescue a victim. Let's say this cat was in the same spot as this firefighter and he was carrying this cat into the elevator. What he does is he spends two action points, moves into the space with the elevator, and then for two action points, he closes the door, which sends the elevator down to the lobby. And once a potential victim, or victim in this case, is in the lobby, they're immediately rescued. Another thing a firefighter can do when they're in the lobby is for two action points, they can go to any spot with a uh, fire engine parking space. They can go to the fire engine or they can go to any vacant parking spot for the fire engine. And likewise, if they are in a spot with a parking spot or at the fire engine for two action points, they can be at the elevator in the lobby. One last option here is, let's say a firefighter is gonna go to the lobby and there's another one adjacent to one of the doors. The firefighter here could actually send that elevator down to the lobby without having to be in the elevator so he's ready for when this firefighter spends his two action points on his next turn and goes in here. Now remember, just a reminder about the elevator spaces, you can't, um, if you roll to advance a fire or roll to place a potential victim, if you roll the spot with the elevator, you just simply re-roll. the door blows off and basically the door is destroyed, that elevator's out of commission, place two, place two fire tokens in that space and that fire can't be extinguished. The elevator's out of commission for the rest of the game. The blue walls are the partition walls. It takes one one damage creates a hole in that wall and the wall's destroyed. So the structural engineer would not be able to repair that hole because yeah, there's nothing left to repair. The walls are real flimsy. The other thing about it is you're gonna notice that there's these doors in that wall and don't think you can just enter those, like open and close the door, no. You actually have to chop those doors down because those are the offices of people who have valuable things maybe or in critical information. So the doors are locked and they do need to be destroyed to get into those areas. And that just increases the damage cube count on this game, which is incredibly tough.
So that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, and you can check out other videos like these and videos that we share on moderntablegamer.com. Check it out. It scales down to mobile, so you can check it out on your iPhone or your Droid, and also your tablet, iPads. It works great. So next time you go to a game day, pull it up if you get stuck on some rules, and maybe you'll find the video you need. Hit subscribe on our YouTube channel, and you'll be the first person to be able to see new videos as they're released. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And my last thing is, if you're not playing games at least once a week, the planets won't align and we'll never achieve world peace. So take care.